Hey, little buddy, what you watching? Uh, why, uh, why'd you pick this video? What the? Butler, well, why are you letting them watch this? What do you mean? It's just a YouTube video. What? This situation is definitely not skibbity. What? How do I even begin? I guess the best place to begin is. <laughs> Sorry about that, had to make sure your brain was rewired to be able to process this content. Do I have your attention? Do I need to put... Uh, we get... We'll get some subway surfers down there at the bottom for you. Let's talk a little bit about... The iPad Kid. If you're unaware, the iPad Kid refers to the phenomenon of children being raised by their mobile screens. The reason we use the term iPad Kid is because most people own an iPad and not an Android Galaxy Tab S9. The iPad Kid is given their tablet at the grocery store, in the car, at Mima's house, at Mima's wedding, at Mima's funeral, and instead of interacting with the world around them, they're watching... well... <laughs> We'll get to that. The children of today are ruined. The future is lost. It's the fall of Rome. Ah, we've all heard it. Everyone's got their scapegoat for why the children of today are lost. I know it's a big meme that every generation says that the incoming generation are a bunch of mind-rotted, lazy, drug-addicted sex fiends that'll never amount to anything, and they're just gonna ruin civilization. It's a real the sky is falling thing going on each generation. But hey. I think I just got hit by a piece of cloud. Kids these days can't read, dude. Kids these days can't do basic math, dude. Strangely enough, kids these days, and by these days, I mean not just the little, little guys, but also Gen Zers, they don't know how computers work. Can somebody tell me what the kids do know? Well, if you asked one, you might find that what they do know is not really a lot. Now, before you get your panties in a twist and leave angry comments on this video like a dope, obviously this is a generalized statement that doesn't include everyone. The fact that I even have to say that is evidence that there are some critical thinking problems going on. I don't give a poop about education, though. I'm a video game man. Now, I'm here to talk about what the little brats are beaming into their brains with their screens. And no, I'm not going to talk about Skibbity Damn Toilet. <laughs> If I see one more person be like, ugh, skibbity toilet, I don't get it, it's so dumb, the children are lost, what is this? You sound like an old fogey and you need to shut up. I know, gold coming from me, right? How is this any different from Madness Combat? Or the plethora of nonsensical TF2 SFM videos? Skibbity toilet style content is as old as the internet itself, it's nothing new, special, or uniquely bad. It's not annoying orange, or god forbid Fred. So the crazy guy really does know where I live. What if he comes over here and steals all the food out of our fridge? I don't want anyone to steal our food. I say unto thee, let he who was without cringe cast the first stone. No, I'm talking about Elsa x Spider-Man crap. The Elsa Gate stuff, remember that? Remember how YouTube claimed that the Elsa Gate crap was taken care of? Well, it wasn't. It literally wasn't. We begin our journey with YouTube Kids, because I'm willing to bet all of negative two of you have ever actually bothered to look at it. See this? This is what a responsible parent does. Now you can sign in and create a profile for each kid. If you choose to sign in, you get more controls, whether you want to allow lots of videos or handpick your own. And let's be real, this does kinda work. I give credit where credit is due. YouTube has clearly tried to implement some kind of solution here. And it certainly staves off the kind of content I'll be showing you here in a minute. Though there are still problems. You still have crap like Billion Surprise Toys, which, I mean, if you want your kids to be developmentally stunted, sure, I guess they can watch this. I would show some Billion Surprise Toys footage, but companies like these are aggressive as hell and constantly on the lookout for anyone talking about their content. Don't let your children watch this crap. But I don't have to show you Billion Surprise Toys. Because, and I mean this with very little exaggeration, almost every single one of the channels on YouTube Kids is like this. 
Of course, you got your big brand names like Sesame Street and Barney and Paw Patrol, but I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about Vania Mania Kids. What did I tell you? Oops. <laughs> This is the exact same kind of content as Billion Surprise Toys or Coco Melon, except it's live action. Fun fact, if your child watches content like this, they will grow up developing problems with their speech. People wonder what it is specifically about this content that hurts development. There's been a lot of studying going on about it, but I, Professor Hauntlich, final boss of a lost media video game, am here with the answer. I've figured it out. Is it the hyperactive imagery? The stupidity of the content itself? No, no. Nay, nay. It's the fact that everybody speaks English as a second, possibly even third language, and you're showing the content to a tiny human that's only just trying to learn English as their first language. You shouldn't open the door to the strangers. Peggy, can you let Wednesday in? I want to play with her spider. No, this spider is so scary! As it turns out, language is pretty important to development. Dare I say, fundamental even. This is for you, Chris. This is for you, Nicole. Wow, cool! Yay! Stop, kids! <laughs> you make it wrong! Now open it! We've known for generations that young children learn how to speak just from listening to adults. Try to get little Timmy to say she sells seashells by the seashore when the content they watch is being spoken by Indians speaking English with a French accent. Let's actually look at the content of this. What is this children's content trying to teach your children? Because I reject the idea that there is content for children that is just entertainment. Your children are learning things from the content they watch. Period. They just are. You can't stop it. That's what's happening. You shouldn't open the door to the strangers. Huh? Wow, it's Wednesday. Hi, secret box delivery. The lesson, if you can harmlessly imply that there is a lesson, is that children shouldn't open the door for strangers. Adults should open the door for strangers. Okay. Hi, secret box delivery. But every person that's come to the door is a beloved character that's carrying a present. So, uh, I don't know. I actually don't know. I'm probably thinking too hard about this. Except, wait, no, nobody else is thinking at all about this. This is children's content. You know, children, the people who are still learning how to be people. You should be thinking hard about this. You should be thinking harder about it. Talented people came before who knew that children's content is a media tightrope. They boiled it down to a science and were able to craft some of the finest children's media the world had ever known. To this day, Sesame Street remains the best educational content on TV for children. We'll see how it goes in the post-HBO era, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. The important thing is that they were able to do that because they knew it was important. They understood that children's media should not and could not just be throwaway stupidity because, as it turns out, children are important. It only took a few clicks to get here. And I started on a Paw Patrol video from the front page. But now that I'm here, I'm almost completely out of the realm of what I would consider to be mainstream children's content. We're just knee deep in crap now. Welcome, dear viewer, to the developmentally stunted zone. Only a few more clicks away and we find the Grinch Brain Break Party. I'm thrilled, I'm stoked, I'm jazzed even to show you this. It's the Grinch Brain Break Party. 20 minutes of action-packed Mr. Grinch fun. Can you make it to the end? Let's start things off with the Grinch Freeze Dance. I know about this because I worked at a school with small children, post-2022. You know, when all this garbage was in full swing. And let me tell you, the teachers at this school, they trust YouTube kids. Very frequently, they would put on specifically these kinds of videos. They called them, and I quote, games. 
Martins. Now I have no qualm with showing you the majority of this because Mr. Coach Cory Martin can literally pound sand for all I care. Fight me, bitch. I'm gonna show a good chunk of it because I don't think I can properly express in words my problem with this without having you experience it. So buckle up. It's time for the Grinch Freeze Dance. Dance along when the music plays. Freeze when you see Mr. Grinch. Be ready for some fun mini games. Here we go. Why are you celebrating Christmas? I'm gonna take it away from you and it's gonna be my holiday. All right, well, I've certainly had enough of that. I have an upper tolerance of cringe in one sitting. I need, I need to decompress for a minute. It's made of either clip art or stolen assets, which is why I have no qualm with showing you the whole thing. What's Coach Cory gonna do? Argue that I'm stealing his stolen content? Besides, ain't no little baby's gonna be running at the screen on the Hauntlich channel. At least they better not. Go away, children. It's the Mario Movie Brain Break Party. 25 minutes of action-packed Mario fun. Can you make it to the end? Here we go. It's me, Mario. Bowser has stolen Luigi and we need your help. Complete all the levels to save the day. Good luck. Level one, you've got to find Princess Peach, run through Mushroom Kingdom, and dodge the obstacles. Real talk, how has Nintendo not straight up had this guy murdered? Honestly, this isn't even the worst thing on our list of sins. I witnessed these firsthand at school, and kids did participate in them. They got up, ran around, jumped about, you know, they followed the directions. So at least they were you know, doing something. Exercise is important. This content gets haunt liches, won't condemn you to eternal torment in the pits of hell out of 10. But I'm not here to talk about copyright or anything like that. We all know that crap like this exists. I'm here to talk about the effects on kids' brains. And, oh, hey, VTubers. Guess what we're doing today? We're gonna be laying in bed all day long. If we have any normies in the audience, a VTuber is a person who makes content with an animated character instead of a camera. Don't fall. Don't look down. I'm not looking down. I'm literally, actually, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the ceiling. Perfect. <laughs> Harmless. It's children's introduction to VTuber content. Not great, but it seems harmless at first glance. I mean, you feed your kids McDonald's, don't you? Cutie the Bunny seems to be pretty wholesome. No swearing, no weird sexual thumbnails. Sexual? Hauntlich, did you just say... Sexual? Now that's the experience of a child whose parents care. They bothered to set up the account, they adjusted the settings, they selected the proper age group. And maybe, just maybe, they actually watched these videos with them to try to guide them away from billion surprise toys. Now we'll look at the typical experience. The iPad kids' parents, generally speaking, do not care. Otherwise, they wouldn't be iPad kids, now would they? Ladies and gentlemen, Elsa Gate never ended. They just obscured it from your vision long enough for you to stop caring about it. Behold the fetid splayed sick of the internet laid bare for all to see. There are a lot of these nasty little bootleg cartoon YouTube channels for ahem, kids. But I found the Sonic the Hedgehog ones to be particularly neat. Call it a morbid curiosity, if you will. They're truly wretched, and though their art styles differ slightly from channel to channel, they all have extremely similar themes and even plot lines. 
leading me to believe that they are all in some way connected. Most of these videos are over an hour long, but all they're doing is recycling old animations and repeating the same animations in the same video. It's content farm schlock cobbled together in Toon Boom Studio by people who I guarantee are either in India or China. Designed all to farm clicks and watch time. For some reason, there are a lot of these where the Sonic characters are inexplicably mermaids. I don't know whose fetish this is, but brother, it ain't mine. All these Sonic channels rip each other off. There's no way of figuring out who started what trend. Like Shadow being the Hulk and Sonic being Spider-Man. Or like who started giving Amy gigantic knockers. <laughs> Okay, so I have to know, is the sinkhole full of garbage a thing that happens in India or what? <laughs> now you are a husband and wife. <laughs> Tails is officiating their wedding, which is neat. I didn't even know he was ordained. And what? It, what is happening back here? <laughs> This one is particularly hilarious to me because whatever indentured servants made this didn't realize that Rouge is supposed to be a bat. They thought her wings made her like a devil girl, which is why Amy has angel wings here. <laughs> well, now that's just inappropriate. I clicked on these thumbnails and I searched around and let me tell you, dear viewer, not a sexy Pomni was to be found, and by God, I looked. In this one, Sonic has to put himself through rehab to learn how to walk again after a terrible accident. He sets up a romantic dinner for he and Amy to celebrate his ability to walk again. Look at him, he's struggling to stand! It's too much, it's too much. And he puts together a video about his recovery and how much he loves Amy and the relationship so strong and what is this? But wait, what's this? He's getting cucked, bro! Can I ask, do kids enjoy stories like this? This is for kids, right? I've gotta check the comments. Surely someone else is upset that there's no sexy Pomni in this. I appreciate how Sonic encourages positive communication and problem solving. I love how Sonic emphasizes the importance of teamwork and cooperation. I appreciate how Sonic incorporates educational elements into its storytelling. I appreciate how Sonic addresses important social themes in a kid-friendly way. Sonic Sonic teaches kids about empathy and understanding for others. These are all definitely organic comments that were posted by real human beings for real, I promise. I'm not crazy, this butt lineup thing is a really specific fetish, is it not? These videos range from having a couple hundred views to several million views. None of them are really doing Coco Melon numbers, but people are watching them. And if I can find them just by clicking around, nothing stops your average kid. Especially when the content looks identical to what it's bootlegging, like this. No way! Oh, I need money! I have to imagine this exists because the people who make the bootleg content actually have access to the original Toon Boom assets. In case you don't know, a lot of modern Western animation is done in a software called Toon Boom Studio. It's the same way that Chinese manufacturers are able to make bootleg products. It's because they have the originals they use to make the real products. At this point, I'm sure you're wondering, who actually makes this content? Is it AI generated? Well, my viewing audience, it's worse than AI generated. It's exploited labor. Yeah, in India, while quote, indentured servitude, end quote, is technically not a thing that's legal. Not only does India have a major labor exploitation problem, but actual slavery is still a problem for the country. This goes for China as well. Both countries which are infamous for content farms utilize exploited workers to make the content. Unfortunately, the best I've got for you is generalized statements about this, because the phenomenon of the content farm has had very little global scrutiny. Just another thing nobody gives a shit about, I guess. Anyways, back to the point about the iPad kids. These kids are plopped in front of their screens as much as possible, and they tap away, eventually making their way to content like this. Even if you set up the YouTube Kids account, the quality of the content they're seeing drops off a cliff in only a few short clicks. And even if it's not wretched, weirdly sexual content farm Teen Titans or Sonic or SpongeBob cartoons, it's crap like this. Lily's fast asleep. Her brother's preparing a prank. 
Drink some water. Oh, I have to go. Brian, I'll show you now. Huh, as if I'm scared. Catch the fireball, dude. Oh, no. Oh, mommy. I can't even actually tell if this is Troom Troom or if Troom Okie Toki is a bootleg. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Skibbity Toilet is probably the least of your concerns when it comes to the content kids are consuming on these damn platforms. There are a lot of people making videos about iPad kids, a lot of news outlets talking about the declining cognitive abilities of the youth, but most of them seem to miss the mark as to who's to blame. They blame video games, they blame the Skibbity Toilets, and they blame the crap cartoons they watch. When at the end of the day, it's you. You, the parent. You are the ultimate arbiter of what your child sees. You're the one that puts the iPad in their hands. You are the one who decides at the grocery store that it's easier to distract your child with a tablet rather than making the effort to include them in your shopping trip. You're the one that decides that actually sitting down and curating content for them is either too hard or you just don't have the time. Or maybe, just maybe, you don't care to. Well, when your kid's eight and can barely string a sentence together, you'll wish you'd made the time. Are the Gen Alphas and the Gen Betaers and the Gammas and Omegas doomed? Everyone else seems to think so. Me? I'm gonna be honest. I think the kids will be just fine. Yeah, the reading thing is a problem, but smart people are already cooking up ways of fixing that. And it might be a little annoying that your little cousin Tim Tom or whoever keeps skibbitying at you or tells you that you have Ohio Riz, but come on, they're no different than we were. And we were no different than our parents before us. Kids are gonna be kids. The landscape of media is a bit different than before, and it's crucial that parents learn how to navigate it. I think these kids will be just fine, on one condition. Their parents have to actually care. I got that dog in me, Boo! I got your dog in me! <laughs>